Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. If you're watching visually, you can see that I am in my full Burning Man outfit, because I'm going to Burning Man, look at this. I fucking love this outfit so much. Um, and if you're not watching visually, just imagine uh, the woman from the Fifth Element movie. I very much feel like I am channeling her vibration today, and I'm going to definitely do that when I'm in the dust in the desert. Um, I have always wanted to go to Burning Man, like my entire life. Well, at least ever since I knew what it was. <laughs> uh, and it feels very aligned that I'm going now. So today what I'm excited to talk to you about is um, a lot of this thing around uh, coming home to ourselves and to each other and I, I guess this is a topic that's on my mind because I myself am going home and I haven't been back to where I'm from, like in the States in, I'm from California, I grew up in California. Um, I haven't been back like home to see my family in I would say maybe eight or 10 years, depending on which family member we're talking about. Um, yeah, like I haven't seen my mom in like 10 years and I am ready to go back and face this and heal whatever can be healed. And I feel like this is a really important topic to talk about today because um, also my room looks really bare behind me. I'm moving stuff around in my house right now. Uh the reason why I haven't been back is because when I left my religion, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, and when I left my religion, uh, my entire family decided that they didn't want to speak to me anymore. So within the religion, it's like you're in or you're out once you get baptized. Um, and I actually, that's what I would consider a cult because the religion itself, like the community within the religion is really beautiful. Uh, but the programming around it that like once you're baptized, you have to adhere to these very specific guidelines of like not only how you think and how you act, but like like not it's like every single thing that you can they control every single part of your life and if you're out of alignment with what they want, then you are kicked out and you're not like your family is encouraged to not speak to you. Because the reasoning behind it, and this is such good brainwashing, is that your entire soul is at stake, your eternal salvation. And so if you, if your family does not speak to you, it will encourage you to come back, which is actually good for you because then your soul will be saved. <laughs> and on that, we're going to take a deep breath. Um, so I left when I was 24 and I traveled the entire world. I went to over 70 countries. And I was, like, really doing stuff. Like, I don't feel like I was running away. I was building community, building businesses, adventuring, exploring. I love traveling. Um, and, you know, when you travel to over 70 countries, you really see, you really see how the world works. And you really see that, like, we... If you ever seen like the Matrix movie, like they have this thing that like everything's being controlled and you know, we need to break out of the Matrix. Well, what I find really interesting is growing up in this religion and then traveling so much, I realized that everything is a matrix. Everything is a system. A matrix is just like a system of how we operate in order to keep things running. So you can have a government as a matrix of like, we, we, you know, we take care of the land, we take care of the people, you pay taxes, we do this, we do that. That in itself is a matrix. There's religious matrixes, which is, you know, you believe a certain thing and we handle the reality of your soul and your spirituality and your connection to source. But there's also like community matrixes, which is like, you know, within, I see this even in conscious communities out here on Copanyong, where like people feel like they have to be spiritually enlightened. They have to act a certain way. They even dress a certain way. Uh, when you come to the island, you'll notice it um, in order to feel like they fit in. So really what everyone is doing is 
doing their best to adhere to certain standards, customs, ali like aligning to the matrix that they're currently in, in order to be worthy or feel worthy at least of connection within that matrix system. So like within my, within my family, the matrix was you follow this religion. And within my religion, it was you follow, you know, these guidelines of like only spending time with people who are Jehovah's Witnesses, only marrying someone who's a Jehovah's Witness, only getting, only having sex after you're married. And you have to dress a certain way. You have to do these things. You have to think this way. You have to, and the whole church is run by men. Uh, women are not allowed to speak from, like, teach from the platform. They're not allowed to teach to the church. They're not allowed to have places of power within the church. So it's all run by men. And what I find really interesting is, like, which parts of ourselves are authentic to, like, you know, you're doing certain things in order to fit and to receive connection. Like, even where you are from, like, your friend group, your family dynamic, your work dynamic, you are adhering to certain guidelines in order to fit in. But like which part of those are actually authentic to you? Like which part of those actually feel at home in your body? And which part of those you are not authentic to you? You're, you're doing because you want to fit in. So for me, I needed to travel and really see things. I needed to look at the world. I needed to experience many different cultures. I've dated m mostly. I've always almost always dated men where they're not American, English is not their first language. Like I've really explored <laughs> from all angles the different dynamics of human conditions and connections because I wanted to see through that mirror and those reflections who is Brittany Bond. And what I have learned and what I find super funny and ironic is that there are some key principles of the way I was raised um, that I'm coming like full circle on. So um, <laughs> like some beliefs, I'll give you an example. So like I was raised that, you know, from a very young age, I was uh, s like objectified sexually. So I've looked like this. I've been this tall. I've looked like this, had this body since I was 12 years old. And so ever since I was 12, people thought I was in my 20s. Like just the way I carried myself, like how my body developed and everything. Like we would go out to, I would go out to dinner with my dad, like on work trips with him. And the waiter would think that I was his girlfriend and like offer me the wine list. And my dad would get so angry. He'd be like, she's 14, like stop. <laughs> like she don't give her the alcohol list. And because I, you know, also I think it's my Scorpio energy, like this is just, there's a lot of sexual energy coming out of me, which I love and I fully embrace now. But at the time, it was really shamed and it was really like uh, encouraged to be suppr suppressed within myself. And I actually feel like this happens to a lot of women where we are, um, we are like, made to feel shame for what is actually our feminine power. You know, like us being vibrant and feeling ourselves and feeling really yummy in our body and f flirting, flirting with life, flirting with everyone around us purely for the enjoyment of being alive, not needing to get anything out of anyone, just doing it because we are just feeling so juicy in our bodies and we're excited to share this juiciness with everyone around us, right? So because of this, like, and also being raised in my religion, it was like literally like within my religion, like masturbation was a very bad thing. Like men within that men that grew up, boys that grew up as Jehovah's Witnesses, there was this whole thing where a lot of them were killing themselves because they felt so bad that they were masturbating because it was so like such a negative thing within the matrix of the mental religious construct that we were raised in, right? So, and also like no sex before marriage and like all this stuff. And I, I really rebelled against this. And, um, you know, I got married as a virgin. So I, f I followed what the religion said 
uh, at 18. I got married at 18 as a virgin. And for six years, I had one partner, my, my husband. We were married for six years. And then after that, because I was so used to the religious and the matrix programming that I grew up in, I had primarily monogamous relationships after that for a couple years. But my soul and my body really wanted to explore all of the different types of sexuality. Let's put it this way. And, you know, then I started, I met someone where we, he was in, he was a relationship coach and he was into open, open dating. What? Open relationships? <laughs> Words today? I feel very like in my body today, but also really like spacey at the same time. There's a lot of things happening in my vortex I'll speak about. Um, but Anyway, so I started dating this guy and he was like, yeah, let's, let's do, let's be in an open relationship. And I was like, yeah, I've always wanted to explore this in a way that felt safe for me. So I'm super down to do this. And th what the dynamic that we set up was like with, we were, we were living in Chiang Mai at the time and within our community in Chiang Mai, within our friend group, we were monogamous, um, but when we traveled, and we both traveled a lot for work and for play, and most of the time we traveled separately, we, when we traveled, we would be open. And sometimes we would tell each other, like sometimes we would go travel to visit a lover, and we would, of course, tell each other that. And sometimes it would, we would say, like, you know, whoever we meet on this trip, we just want to let each other know what happens when we come home, but here's our agreements, you know, like use condoms, and, of course, like, be careful and like be safe, you know, like have fun, make sure the person's respecting you. Like he'd always be like, just make sure you feel safe and he's respecting you. So stuff like this. And that for me worked really well. One, because um, I think I knew intuitively that this man that I was dating, he was my friend for like a year and a half before we dated. I, I knew intuitively that he wasn't my, he wasn't going to be the man of my children. Like he wasn't going to be like someone that I spent the rest of my life with. It's not that I knew that consciously, but I think deep down I knew that. And so it made it less, um, it was like easier emotionally for me to to process like him sleep, being with other people because I just didn't care as much. I think that was, it was like an easy entryway into openness, I guess is the best way to say it. I still cared a ton, but I didn't, like I wasn't as worried about my heart getting broken because I think I knew, you know, we weren't going to be together forever. And... And then I dated someone here on the island where I told him in the beginning, like, okay, I want to be, I want to be open, but we ended up not while we were in the relationship because he didn't feel comfortable. And during the time that him and I dated, we, I started, I started organizing the play parties and the first two play parties I organized, him and I were dating and he was like, yeah, I'm okay with us playing with other people during the play parties. But then the day of the play party, I could tell that he actually was not okay with it. Like he wasn't comfortable. And I recognize now, this is super <laughs> interesting since everything that's happened recently, that my energy around, my energy with him was like, I loved him with this, this partner that I had was that I loved him, but my freedom was more important to me, me going and exploring was more important to me than the relationship with him. Like, I basically, I was, I was kind of in this energy of like, I'm going to break up with you if you're not okay with this. And even still, with those first two play parties, I didn't play with anyone because he said it was okay, but I could tell it wasn't. And I, I of course, was, wasn't going to do anything that hurt, you know, that hurt his feelings or anything. But like, it's still like it bothered me to the point where like it really affected our relationship and we had a lot of fights about it. And what I recognize now is I was, I was playing out this, this character of like, is this who I am? Like, am I a per someone who is non-monogamous by nature? Do I want this? Because everyone in my life growing up told me that I couldn't, I couldn't have this. And so I want, I wanted to try it. And then enters so him and I ended up breaking up for other reasons. This was definitely a factor, but like there was many other reasons why we broke up. 
And then I was like single and dating, but not seriously. And and then I dated someone else like casually. And then he was like, I want to be monogamous with you. And I was like, no, thank you. Like, you know, I was really like, I'm my freedom is what matters the most. And then um, enters m- my latest, my, my, my previous boyfriend, uh, he, I met him at a play, a play, at one of my play parties. So I was like, okay, he totally understands like what I'm about. Like I am all about this freedom, this like we, we I want to play and this and that. And then I f- fell in love with him and I actually fell in love with him where I was like, oh, like this could potentially be like m- the future father of my children which I had just recently realized I actually wanted my own children um, like on ayahuasca like the year before. Um, but I hadn't really landed yet because I hadn't met anyone that I, you know, would be a potential father. Um, so while, <laughs> while playing out the dynamic of my last relationship, I was still hosting play parties. I was like, saying that I'm non-monogamous, but I was the one who was like, I actually <laughs> just want to be with you. <laughs> I just, I just, and I just want you to want to just be with me. So I was like holding out this, like, yeah, we can be with other people, but I internally was shifting or, bec- or I guess like coming home to myself, coming home to the awareness that I actually just wanted to be with one person I wanted to like someone enough that I just wanted to be with them and like and also that because what I realized was like you know you can you can go around and you can play with everyone but I had done that for years like I've hosted over 2,000 people on my play parties and what I realized is when you've experienced like all of the pleasure in the world, like anything that you experience, if you do it too much, it loses its charm. I think it's the best way to put this. Or at least it puts it in perspective because for me, like having all of those experiences, I, I also, me being a very sexual person, like I was like, I wanted to have these experiences and I did it in a, you know, the play parties I organize are like super safe, non-penetration. It's really like community vibes, pleasure. It's really, it's really a way to deprogram whatever you have been programmed around your sexuality and figure out what you want. And a lot of the people that come through say like, wow, this was really important for them and then they go home and they like find the partner they end up like being with and having kids with it's so interesting because I know I always saw those people and I was like well that's someone else's life you know like that's not gonna be my life and then now I'm like coming full circle this is what I'm saying at the beginning is like coming home to what is my beliefs and what are the beliefs that have been put on me and what I've realized is like you know, I, one, I know exactly what my mission is here in this lifetime. Like, I know I'm here to be this nurturing, caring leader to those who, who need it, who need help coming home to their bodies, who need inspiration, activation to come into their full power and to really be these light workers in the world to like light up the whole grid, right? Like, I know that that is who I am. And also, like, having done ayahuasca, I was like, wow, there is a huge part of my human, like, within this body, this beautiful body (laughs) that wants to experience what it feels like to have my own family, like, wants to experience the beautiful, like, hanging out in Chiang Mai with my friends. I'm going to cry when I talk about this because, like, just seeing, like, them with their babies, I was just like, You know, people talk about, like, baby fever, and I don't think I have, like, hormonal baby fever. I just was like, wow, it's so beautiful, like, how much they love them. And, like, how much, like, we have this opportunity to, like, create something that you can just love. And they love you, and, like, you can just witness them going through their whole lives, and it's, like, such an honor
and now I like really understand my mom a lot more like how much she she just really loved us so much and she would tell us every single day like you guys are my biggest gifts like I love you you can do anything you're so powerful you're so beautiful and I was like mom you're supposed to say that you're our mom <laughs> like I was like mom you just say I'm beautiful because you're my mom and that's what moms say like I was like I don't believe you <laughs> and she's like no you really are like you're so powerful and you're so beautiful Brittany like and like I'm so grateful that I was able to have you in this like this opportunity to have this connection with another soul that like chooses to come come home to you and like grow up with you is so beautiful wow <laughs> I've been having a lot of these realizations lately, so it is just, for me, it's like this awe of, like, being able to have this human experience. Like, I've spent most of my life, like, really wishing I wasn't here, like, really feeling so alien. Because I, I would look out at the world and I would be like, why is everyone hurting everyone? Like, why is, and I was so sensitive growing up and everything was so loud and like, I didn't understand why people would hurt each other and, and why, yeah, just like so many things that like my soul just like really came in and was just like, I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> But now that I feel safe in my body and I feel really in trust of like divine guidance and source, God, the universe, whatever you connect to, like I really have built up this connection to the source recently in a way where it feels so nourishing. It feels like I'm being wrapped in this like white fluffy blanket and just like so cozy and I just woke up from a nap and everything's taken care of and everyone loves me and all I have to do is receive and enjoy like this is like the feeling that I have in my body lately so um <sighs> words I just lost my thought um I just find it really like so beautiful that we get to experience this human life. Like, do we realize how beautiful it is to have this human experience? And especially what I'm talking about is the idea of connection, the idea of being this individual soul right now temporarily like when we go back into spirit we realize we're all connected but when we're here it's like you know we choose this individuality of this human body experiencing this timeline as one soul and then we get it connect to others and choose like who do we share our energy with and and then, wow, like, sharing your energy with someone enough for you, like, make a baby. Like, that's so beautiful. <laughs> wow, I'm feeling really emotional today. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. So, anyways, coming back to my story. I'm just going to keep crying as I talk. Um... having had all of this pleasure through these play parties and having allowed myself to really go to the extremes of if you know me personally there's a lot of stories I don't share in my podcast because it involves people that like you know I know they don't want me sharing stories or whatever and but like I really push 
myself to the limit sometimes I push the situation to the limits and sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's unnecessary but for me it's always necessary because I'm curious like what happens next I'm curious if there is an opportunity for more alignment I'm curious if I'm curious what the fuck my hair is doing um Anyways, um, sorry, if you're not watching visually, I'm just having one of those hair days. So, me exploring my sexuality was one of these times where, situations where I was going to the extreme. I was like, I've had lots of different sexual experiences, but also it wasn't even sexual, like physical sexual experiences. I wanted to explore my sexual energy. And what does that do? Because I know intuitively that my sexual energy is connected to my life force, which is connected to manifesting things, which is connected to literally creating things in this 3D reality. So for me, like even when I was a teenager, I would masturbate, even though my religion told me it wasn't okay. <laughs> and I definitely was manifesting everything that came into my life. And I would feel so juicy about it. And like while I would climax, I would imagine all the things that I was excited for in my life. And so like and it would come true. So like I knew that my sexual energy was very connected to creating things in the 3D and that it had a lot of power. And so when I was exploring all of this stuff, I I realized that I don't want to share my sexual energy with just anyone. Like it's very special and I actually would love to use and I choose to use my sexual energy to create things to build things so that was one thing especially in my last relationship where I was like you know anyone I'm connecting to I want to feel like they are adding to our life or anyone my partner is connecting to like are they literally adding to the life that we're building here or are they just distracting are they for fun like I've already had all the fun so for me the fun is now like I meant fun and like casual pleasure and there's nothing wrong with that I literally create parties for this and I'm having a play party this weekend but for me it's not even casual because when you're exploring your sexuality and you're really going through these dynamics of um, deprogramming yourself this is doing the work you know I always say we can heal through pleasure we can heal our programming through pleasure or or hours and hours of therapy you know you, or you can do both I'd have done both so for me, I had already done all of that fun work of exploring my programming, and now I realized, oh, I want to build, I want to build a life. I want, I choose, I already have a, I have a how, I have a life here that I have built, and I want to build it with someone and make it bigger and global and global impact, you know, more, more material wealth and, and more soul family and more like every more everything. And so whoever I was sharing my sexual energy with, which is my life force energy, which is literally what is going to amplify and create my life, that's really special. And that's something that I choose to be very, I mean, you could say careful, but I would just say like strategic about who I share that with. And for me, this is really ironic because, you know, growing up in a religion where it was like, protect your sexual energy and, you know, but they did it to the point where it was like, it was a way to control people within the religion. Um, and I think that this is the thing that's different or this is the thing that I needed to have was like coming full circle on this. It's like coming, like choosing to be selective on where I put my sexual energy and who I share it with for me and doing this from a, a place of like conscious awareness of like this is my choice and I understand the flow of my energy in my body like wow doing this from my like my own place of power if it, it feels empowering it feels embodying I feel like I know who I am and I know what I want 
and I receive it from the universe, like gracefully and with lots of gratitude. And and also, like, this is when I really know uh, I am my own authentic person because I've had the lived experience of <coughs> trying many different things, many different versions, <coughs> excuse me, many different versions of Brittany. And this is the Brittany that I am right now. And the Brittany that I am right now is like, wow, I've explored all of that. That's really beautiful. And now I know who I am and what I want and what I what I would love and what I choose is to come home to myself more and more and share my my life force energy, my sexual energy with someone who is excited to build a life with me and is excited to one day have kids. It's not that I need kids right now. Like I'm I'm open to whatever the universe is flowing and you know, like I really don't buy into this scarcity mentality of like age and like people need to have kids by a certain age. I really, especially here on the island, like a lot of my friends are having kids, like home ba- her home births that are so beautiful and so natural and um, safe. I think that's really important to say, safe. Um, at like, you know, 37, 38 years old, sometimes 40 years old. And when you're living deep in nature and you're eating organic food and you're healthy and your body is physically healthy like you're literally not putting chemicals in your body you're connected to nature like I feel like since living on the island here over the last five years I have actually feel like I look younger than I did before because my body is exposed to less chemicals more nature and it's just less stress and like more connected in general to my community to my purpose to who I am like th- all of that creates a really healthy um, symbiosis. I don't know what, like it's like, a, this is like a really healthy vibration for you to create life. And so I just, yeah. And the reason why I'm saying all of this is because going back to the States is, is kind of this, it's one of the final coming home, <laughs> literally coming home. Uh, physically, but also like in my psyche, like really checking in with like, okay, this is who I am now. And I'm going to go back to the people that birthed me and the people I was raised with, my sisters. And, and also like my, both sides of my family are from Oregon. So I'm thinking of doing a road trip down Oregon and like seeing a bunch of family and like just checking in with like these diff like basically like who we are is like integrating all these different parts of ourselves and like there's a part of me Brittany who you know grew up there and was raised in this programming and these belief systems and around these people with their frequency and their energy and do I choose to align with them am I you know is there anything I can heal here how do I do this how do I heal this from a place of power like like my own empowerment so that I am grounded and centered in my body. And one big download I've had recently is I have spent most of my life um, creating spaces, safe spaces for other people, and I haven't really created safe spaces for myself, like in a way that I actually need. And a big one for this, what this means is like for most of my life, I have lived with other people. So I shared a room with my sister until I was 15. And I got married like when I was 18. And even when I wasn't dating someone after I left my marriage and my religion, I had a travel company where we were living. Like I had my own room, but we were all living in the same house or apartment or mansion or whatever. And then, you know, in between all of those things over the years, after that, I had many boyfriends, many housemates, villa mates like there's a part of me that loves to live in community and there's another part of me that is like what does Brittany need right now and I wasn't really asking that question like what is actually healthy for me and to take up space in in the places that were my spaces so like for instance here at the collective this, this is my house and for most of the time that I've had this I've had other people living with me whether it's a partner or friends or people who just needed a place to stay, like, and 
I wasn't really taking up the space of like, this is my house. Like, I, I remember the times where I even like gave it over to friends. I was just like, oh, I'll live somewhere else. And what I recognize now was like, this it was my connection to feeling also at home within my body. Because like a home that you occupy, occupy is an external reflection of how you feel within your body. So within my home here, I was like giving up my space to other people. I was just like, here, you can stay here. Here, yeah, I'm going to go live over here. You can, you can have my house. But what that meant was like even within my psyche, I was giving up my, my space to other people. And I did this in the form of like always helping people all the time instead of like making sure I was okay first and then helping people from a place of abundance. And when I asked myself, like, why was I doing that? Because usually there's, there's two reasons. Like, I would say, like, this is really important for you to know as well. Is like, when you're giving, ask yourself, is this coming from a place of abundance? Or is this coming from, like, energy? Is this coming from the energy of abundance? Like, am I, am I excited to give this? Is it something I don't, like, I don't need? I have extra energetically, materially, whatever? Or is this coming from a, a place of scarcity? And if it's coming from a place of scarcity, it usually means one of two things. Like one, you you feel like you need to do it in order to receive love or connection or approval. So it's like, a, like an emotional thing that you're asking for, if that's scarcity. Or you're actually not valuing who you are and so and so that and you're doing that because you don't feel like you're worthy within yourself of of like just receiving or being yourself and for me it was a little bit of that like I just like I've always I've always just I I'm very good at receiving abundant spaces from the universe I have abundant energy from the universe I'm rich energetically and I honor this so the spaces that I occupy physically I I usually always have a two or three bedroom house if not like a a, a huge villa you know like so over the years I've always been like oh I have all this extra space I want to be able to share this with people Instead of, and I think that's fine, that's beautiful, but I had never really given myself the space to really occupy these spaces on my own. So like my energy manifested this space, brought this space into my life, this home, because that's the energy I have inside. And I wasn't taking up the space physically, like in the sense of like, no, this is my house, you know, and I'm gonna, going to honor that this is my house. And what I realized is, one, it's because yeah, there's a part of me that wasn't giving myself this, like, like basically dating myself. Like, Brittany has value. Brittany, like, I am my own primary partner. What do I need? Um, so I was running around, like, energetically, like, wanting connect- wanting connection from other people. And, you know, and it's like soul family. I want connection from soul family, whether it's someone I was dating or uh, people I loved. Like, come live with me. Let's hang out. Like, I really, I am this tribal community person. This is how I was raised. But there was also this other part of me that was just like programmed from the religion and also from my human design is like, I need to help people. This is like who I am in this global timeline we're playing out. And I think that's beautiful. I love helping people. I'm so grateful that this is my role in all of this beautiful unfolding. And I really enjoy it. I feel like it is, you know, the universe using me as a vessel to serve. And for me, that is just so grateful. It's not an ego thing. It's like, it's just more connection and more feeling like we are all doing it together. That feeling of like we're in it together is so beautiful. But it needs to come from a place of abundance. And what I realize is for me to do this from a place of abundance, I need to make sure that I am taking up space within my own home and, and really asking myself what does Brittany need first and checking with what she needs and what I realize is when I have people live with me I don't ask that question I wake up and everyone else is like already doing stuff and like there's just energy already happening and my energy usually just accommodates that energy 
or <laughs> what I do is without realizing I will kind of push back on that energy of whoever's in my house to try and create my space and it ends up creating conflict because they don't know why I'm doing that and I don't even know why I'm doing that and I just end up getting in fights with people that I love but what I really needed was just to live on my own <laughs> and since coming back from Chiang Mai I'm here in my house by myself and I have really just enjoyed living in my own space so much. Like when I got here the other day, I was just like dancing in my house naked and uh, meditating on my day bed and like just like like sometimes crying because I was just like really like, wow, what does Brittany need right now? And like, where do I want to put my clothes and wh how do I want to organize my own house? And I was like, I have been living in this, literally this specific house for almost five years and I've always accommodated what other people wanted around me when it came to this house because I never really took up the space. And this might seem like, oh, okay, this is a small thing, but for me, this is a huge thing. This is like a huge place of my power within myself because for the first time in my life, I am taking up space externally that is equally the vibration that what I am internally generating so I'm not giving this energy to other people I'm not asking other people to come hang out with me I'm just owning the energy that I'm in and enjoying it and like really really like nourishing myself within it and from this place of abundant energy and power, I have been working on a second course that I am making for all of you and, you know, planning my Burning Man trip, organizing a play party for this next weekend, like figuring out what I'm doing with the house long term, like, you know, hanging out with my dog. Like there's so much beautiful things that are happening in my life right now. And I'm doing all of this from like this place of deep embodiment because for the first time in my life, I'm asking what does Brittany need first? And a huge shift in this was that one, again, one of the, the programmings that I had growing up was that like, oh, this is a big one. Um, so remember I said that like, within the religion I grew up in, within Jeho Jehovah's Witness religion, uh, women are not allowed to preach from the, like, the platform to the congregation. So, like, women have no places of power within the religion. And so everything's run by men. Even, even within, like, the dynamic, like, say I was, I'm, you know, when I was married, like, if the men who were running the church wanted to give me counseling, which is usually like, oh, we don't like the way Brittany's dressed, or we don't like the way she's speaking, like, she's speaking too boldly, or whatever, like, they didn't like me, and their opinion, I was too in my power. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't say that, but they would just say, she needs to dress more modestly, um, you know, she needs to be quieter, like, all this stuff, bullshit. And so they wouldn't even talk to me. They would talk to my husband and he would have to give me this counseling. So like literally, but what I realize now is all of this, and even within the religion, they would like say that like women were less powerful than men and like men were the head of the household. Like women could like give their opinion, but the men who were the ones who decided what happened at the end of the day within their house, like for everyone. So it was just like really men had all the power. But from a psychological perspective, what I didn't realize until now was that like, you know, the church was really acting like they were the direct channel to source, to God, right? Like they were like, we have this governing body and they, they're talking to God and they're giving us the downloads, and then we're funneling this, these downloads to all y'all, you know, everyone within the religion. And, and then, on top of that, it was funneled through men. So there's two levels of disconnect that was happening. Like, after I, I left the religion, one, I had, to, I had to reconnect myself to my own source connection, my own connection to God, source, the universe, which we all have. And this was a huge place of disempowerment because they're basically saying to you, we are your source connection. You come to us and we're going to tell you what God says to you. 
we are your oracles. We are the ones who, you know, understand more than you do what you need in your life. And we're basically going to translate God to you. So over the last 10 years, I have built up my own source connection. And I, I think this is actually what was freaking a lot of the men out in the church is that, you know, as women, we have naturally one of the strongest source connections because we literally create life within our womb. So we are directly plugged into source because we have this connection to create, like literally we are life creators. And the second thing was, this is the one I want to talk about now, was that like, not only was I feeling disconnected from source, but my source connection came through men. And so <laughs> I was talking to a friend about this the other day in Chiang Mai where I was like really breaking down this programming. And he was like, oh, so you make every guy you date like chur your church. Like basically I was making the men in my life my connection to source because that's how I was raised. So I was making tons of money on my own, but the second that I would start dating someone, I would, you know, ask them like how, I would basically just do the thing that they, that the church told me to do with the men, which is like, you make all the decisions for me now, right? Like you're the head of the household. So I can, I can make money, but only if you want me to. And let's do let, like, you lead on our business stuff and you, you're our, my source connection. Like, tell me the downloads. Like I, I was always attracted to these men that had what I would consider a spiritual connection because I thought, wow, they can help me with the downloads, you know, like that, because this is how I was raised. And even when I would, because I wasn't conscious of it, I, I was totally connected to source on my own when I wasn't dating a man and I was totally letting this universal energy come through me making abundance manifesting everything that I could ever need in my life and then the second I would get with a guy I would just be like okay you are my source connection so you're going to manifest everything I need in my life and you're also going to give me all the spiritual downloads and I will listen to whatever you say like you are the leader now <laughs> And this is very humbling to admit this because I'm a fucking powerful woman. And when you talk to my soul family, especially my godparents, they will tell you, wow, Brittany is so powerful, like so powerful. But whenever she would get with a guy, it was just like all of that power would go out the window and they couldn't figure it out what it was. So for me, this is like such a huge realization lately that like, wow, 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 wow. Not only was I disempowering myself, can you imagine the pressure that I was putting on my partners? Like I apologize to all of my past partners for doing this. Obviously, I didn't realize I was doing this, but I'm really sorry that I tried to make you my source connection. <laughs> and I mean, even if you weren't raised in the religion that I was raised in, I still feel like we have this programming from modern um, patriarchy that like, you know, men are the ones who need to make the money, like all of the money, and they are the ones who need to take care of everything. And I really believe in like, you know, I really, I really choose that the person that I end up with is someone who is very good at handling 3D reality, because actually as the feminine, I want to be more connected to source. I have my own source connection that's probably actually stronger I don't want to say that because a lot of you will be like, oh, I don't know, stronger. I personally, okay, whatever, fuck it. I personally feel like women have a stronger source connection. That's what I believe. I think men can have just, just as strong source connections, but I think as women, we naturally have a stronger source connection. And the more that we're able to drop into our feminine and just really receive and be in spirit, we're getting these intuitive downloads so much in our life. And I believe that the men around us are meant to like hold, like really protect the physical container, like literally like make sure that we have a place to live and we're good. So it's like almost like as a woman, I want to be on this kind of low key psychedelic trip always. Like so feeling yummy in my body and connected to spirit and getting downloads and like kind of in between all the dimensions and like, yeah, very witchy. And like the men, the man who was with me is like, okay, I got, I rented the car for us. We're going on this trip. Like everything's taken care of. Everything's booked. So you can just 
you can just, where do we need to go? <laughs> you know, like, what are we doing? <laughs> and, and so for me, this is, you choose your reality. This is the reality that I choose. And this is what I've come full circle on. And so right now, going home is really helping me to release the last little bits of this program because you can run away from it physically. Like literally, I've traveled all over the world. But there's no way that it's actually going to leave your psyche until you go back and like face it. And of course, like I could I could do my best to face this without going back physically to the States. But I, I like I've done family constellations where I've done energy work on my family line and I've had lots of therapy. I have done somatic work. Uh, but there's something about going back there and I can feel it in my body. It is a it is such a strong, intuitive lead that I need to follow. And of course, the universe understands me and is like, okay, Brittany needs to go out there and do some work, like for her family lineage, to empower herself, to release some more programming. So let's give her a really fun way to go. So I'm landing <laughs> and going directly to Burning Man and getting all this activation, inspiration, play. Because um, for me, like people say, like, Brittany, you are Burning Man. Like you belong in, in Burning Man. And because it's like, supposedly this community of like new earth community because when you get there everyone brings everything and it is completely a trade it's a completely a gifting community so there's no money that happens like i think like emergency if you need to really go buy some ice or something and then no one has ice they have like one store or something that you can go buy stuff but other than that Every single camp brings stuff to contribute. So they bring food, water, you know, parties, and you just go around and you play for a whole week and everyone's sharing and connecting. And of course, it's like in a festival vibration. So that's one thing. But for me, it's the vibration of we're in it together. We're doing this together. And it's all about connection and tribe. So that's, that's my intention. That's why I'm going and also to play and dance and wear cute outfits. I just went and you know, picked out a bunch of outfits from my friend's uh, clothing box. She has a huge clothing box of outfits. And then I'm going to go to the West Coast. Um, and I don't even know yet what I'm going to do. I just know that I need to go there and I need to talk to my family or I need to be open to healing whatever can be healed in whatever way that means. So even if my family doesn't want to see me, just the activation of me being there and being willing to me is already healing for myself and for them because it's all energy. Um, so yeah, that's me. <laughs> There's a lot. Uh, I love this podcast because it was like, normally when I do podcasts, I'm like, here's my five bullet points. I actually, you know, from my legal background, I really like to be organized and I like write notes and stuff. And today <laughs> it's like everything came out and like, not the order I thought and way more emotional, which is great. That means that we're like, you know, being intuitive and in my feminine. And it's all beautiful. So I, yeah, I intend to make some more, po a lot of podcasts while I'm here because I'm going to be offline for a couple of weeks in Burning Man. Um, so I'm here on the island for the next two weeks and I'm hosting a play party this weekend. So if you want to come to that, let me know. And I have openings to do human design readings. I just remembered. I think I have one today. Um, so if you want to do a human design reading, I recommend to do it in the next, like, b before the 17th, because I'm going to be gone. On Adventureland. Um, I hope that this is inspiring, activating. A lot, a lot of downloads. I just know that, like, the best way that I can help you, the collective, is just to be as raw and real as possible and to share with you in like real time what's happening with me. Because for me, a lot of it, it like I realized later, like I could probably make a podcast about what I just d said to you, like what I just made a podcast today about. I probably could make one in like a couple weeks that's a lot more concise and a lot more, oh, that's what this means and this, but it's going to be less raw and real because it's, it's like 
you know, I, I think some of the beauty, beauty of it is that I also don't know what's happening. We're like, we're both eating popcorn, just like, okay, this is what's going on. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> you know, like, and even for me, it's like, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what I'm, what's going to happen. I feel so much is going to change in my life once going out to the States. Like, one, everyone says Burning Man is like a life-changing experience. And then, you know, going and seeing my family and I feel really called to connect to the spiritual community on the West Coast. Um, so there's some opportunities that I have there. And I just feel so much like connection, opportunity, abundance, like healing is happening. It's like already I feel the energy of it and it's like pulling me in that direction. Um, so it's beautiful and I'm sharing this energy with you and I'm sending you lots of love and I'm gonna show you my outfit one more time. This is my cute Burning Man outfit. I told you it's like fifth element style. It's amazing. Okay. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next episode.